Kyle with DIY Garage Door Parts. Today I'm going to just do a general overview of all the parts on a garage door and most what's on most garage door openers. So uh, we'll start out with the track of the garage door. Over here we have the horizontal track and so this mounts to angle iron on the back hangs of your uh, that hangs from your ceiling and that sort of thing. Um, this right here is 12 inch radius track and so how you can tell is this piece of angle comes right to it doesn't come all the way up to this bracket it's like halfway up um, this bracket's called a flag bracket if this was 15 inch radius this angle piece here would be mounted all the way to the top of the flag bracket and so your drums would be mounted higher and all that stuff secondly you have like I said, this is your flag bracket mounted to your flag bracket and your tr horizontal track is your end bearing plate and it holds all the way to the garage door on it and then attached to that is your drums. These are up to an 8 foot tall door. They make them for 12, 10 and 12 foot high doors and even taller. And you've got your torsion cables here and then here is your torsion shaft. And then we'll come down, uh, here's your vertical track and these are two inch tracks this is industry standard uh, they do also make a three inch track the rollers are going to be smaller than two inches they're going to be more like uh, one and uh, one, a little over one and three quarters to fit in that track though but they call them two inch rollers because it fits in a two inch track and then from there you have your uh, top bracket your residential top bracket this is pretty standard. You'll have sometimes you'll see commercial top brackets, which are a little wider and a lot taller, and they stick out farther. And then you got your rollers in here. These are the sealed bearing 13 ball rollers, are nylon coated. And then you've got your um, your these are 14 gauge hinges. This is what we sell on our site. They're commercial grade hinge. Uh, this is the only thing we use on garage doors in general. So. They add a lot of stability to your garage door. Uh, a lot of times they'll use 18 gauge hinges and they're pretty flimsy. You'll see them fatigue and they'll crack and that sort of thing. And these are numbered. So this one's the number three because it's a seven foot tall door. This is number three, two, and then a one. Uh, gauge, and it's again, these are 14 gauge hinges. And then you have struts on your door. These add reinforcement so your door doesn't buckle in the middle and that sort of thing. And they go the span of the garage door and they make them, like for an 18 foot door, you'd have a 17, 11 strut on your garage door. For a 16 foot door, you have a 15, 11 strut. They make them in two inch struts and that's how far they stand away from the garage door. And then they have a three inch. The three inch is gonna be a little stronger, but it's not used except uh, in more high wind situations. Uh, your bottom bracket is where your cables attach to down here and all the tension is on that cable and on this bottom bracket so you don't want to take the screws out of this uh, bottom bracket unless you have the tension off the cables because it'll shoot up and it'll hurt you. And on your garage door you've got to have some sort of counterbalance system so you, there's one of two. Um, there's torsion springs and then there's extension springs. There's a few others that are not very common in the industry, but this door has torsion springs. You can have one torsion spring or you can have two, and occasionally you, you'll see three or four, but most common it's one or two torsion springs. Uh, your torsion springs, um, you have your stationary cone because this cone stays stationary. And then at the other end, you have your winding cone, and that's where you wind it up with winding bars. Um, the springs mount to your center bracket or an center anchor plate, and then it mounts to your header board with some lags. Um, then you have an operator bracket. Not every door has this. This just adds a lot of strength because it mounts underneath of the top strut, and then it actually mounts to the hinge. So you're distributing the workload, um, all the tension, that's put on the door over a bigger area. It goes all the way up and down this top panel, and then it goes, since it goes under the strut, it distributes it left and right too. So this adds a lot of strength to your garage door. And as you can see here on your hinges, the center hinges on this door, they used 18 gauge hinges. So these, 
it's okay to use them on the center hinges. I'm not a big fan of them. I'd rather use 14 gauge hinges. They're just a whole lot stronger. They're gonna flex a lot less and just make everything a lot quieter too. The other type of spring system that you could have instead of torsion springs is an extension spring. It stretches out instead of it winds up and down. So um, it's usually mounted over here. You'll have your cables running up the track and right about here there'll be a three inch pulley, sometimes a four inch pulley. And the cable runs over that and then you'll have a spring attached to this back angle iron and you'll have a pulley attached to the end of the spring and the cable will wind around and then it'll come back and attach to the track. And so when your door's down, the spring will stretch out and that's what counterbalances your door. You'll have one on each side and when the door's up, they, shrink, they compact and are smaller. Okay, as far as your opener goes, all the parts for your uh, garage door opener, there's so many different models and that sort of thing, but here's just kind of a general overview. You're gonna have your arm that is part of your garage door opener. It actually attaches to either your operator bracket or they'll also have, um, it, most openers come with a smaller uh, operator attachment uh, that attaches to the door. And then you're gonna have your emergency disconnect. It attaches to your opener trolley or carriage. So you can disengage and raise the door manually and those vary on how they work. And then you have your opener rail. Usually there's a made out of steel or they're either aluminum. Uh, this particular opener has a belt drive on it, uh, which usually gives you a lot quieter performance over a chain drive or a screw drive. Um, and then back here you've got your motor head and your light covers and un uh, underneath the light covers your light bulb and then on the back side is usually where your circuit board and that sort of thing is. Any opener made uh, after 1996 is required to have photo eyes on it for the safety beams. And so those are usually mounted anywhere from like 5 inches to 10 inches off of the floor. And so um, these are adjustable. Most of them have a screw on the back or the front so you can adjust them and that sort of thing. And the wiring goes to the back of the motor head so it communicates with the motor and the circuit board, you know, when there's an obstruction in the way. On the wall station, uh, sometimes on your garage door opener, you'll have just a single button just to raise and lower the door. If you have a wall station, generally you'll have an up and, up and down button and you'll have a light, light function on it where you can turn the light off and on manually. And then usually you'll have a switch. It'll, sometimes on Genies, they'll be up here. Lift masters will be down towards the bottom, but it'll have a lock or a security feature where you can turn it on by holding it for three to five seconds, or you, in this case, you can flip the switch. And what that does is it basically disables the remote, all the wireless devices. So the remotes, outdoor keypads, all that's disabled. So, you know, if you go on vacation, you're not gonna have somebody break, break into your house if they've got another remote and you don't want them in there. Okay, so this is an outdoor keypad. This one is wireless. Most of them nowadays are wireless. You know, you punch in like a four to five digit code and then hit the start button. It'll communicate with the receiver on the back of the opener or in the opener and raise and lower your door. Most of them can hold up to like, you know, five to eight codes. So you can have a different code for each member of the family or friends or whatever. Um, also, um, this is really handy if you got kids that are coming in from school and they don't have a key or whatever, you don't need to worry about them losing their key. They can just get in the garage and get in the house that way. So it's a really handy feature if you like to take walks or that sort of thing, you don't have to carry your remote or your keys with you. So as you can see, there's not a whole lot of components to your garage door or your garage door opener. So uh, just check us out on DIY Garage Door Parts. If you have any questions, feel free to shoot us an email or give us a call. We'd be glad to help you out find out exactly what you need. We carry all the parts and hardware that you could need. Here at DIY Garage Store Parts, we're family owned and operated. We have all the parts in stock and we ship out the same day or the next business day, as long as it's before 11 a.m. So um, we appreciate the opportunity to earn your business.